clicked or tapped onto the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It is weather for weather geeks here on Tuesday evening, the 18th day of July 2023. As expected, the air quality definitely, uh, we saw some improvement today, even though it's still kind of hazy in some parts of our area this evening. It's a lot better than it was at this same time yesterday. This is uh, about 7.08 p.m. Looking west here in Niles along 422 across from Eastwood Mall. And yeah, you can tell there's still a little bit of haze in the air. Um, but certainly we're not in the, that unhealthy category that we were in in terms of air quality yesterday. We were kind of in here for a lot of the day yesterday. We spent a lot of today in the orange category, which is basically unhealthy for sensitive groups, those with breathing issues, heart issues, things like that. And actually we've been kind of at the bottom of that category. The air quality continues to improve. Now this uh, is sourced out of uh, central parts of Lawrence County. Um, Certainly the air quality is a little bit better the farther north and west you go. In, in fact, I'll show you a map here. At about 7 p.m. you can see all the really good air quality up here along the lakeshore. Uh, there's a front that's just sort of very slowly meandering south. As that front continues to make southward progress, we'll see better air quality trying to push back into our region, certainly. And this um, uh, process of improvement will continue for the next several hours and into the overnight for tonight. That front hung up just enough that it sparked a random shower in a couple of spots this afternoon, early this evening. We had one over in eastern Port, uh, uh, Lawrence County earlier on. We had a sprinkle or a shower around Guilford Lake in the 6 o'clock hour. Down closer to Carrollton, Sherrodsville, we've got a, a couple of showers near Delroy and Atwood Lake um, this evening, but yeah, that's the exception. Most of us are high and dry. We'll be that way as we head through the overnight. In the, in the wake of this front, the dew points are coming down. Now there's a gradient. We have 58 at the airport in the seven o'clock hour, but the dew point in Southern Columbiana County is still up into the 60s. The front hasn't quite cleared there just yet. And certainly the front has not come through places like Dayton and Columbus and Zanesville and Morgantown where dew points are elevated. In fact, a, a soupy 72 degree dew point in Cincinnati this evening. All right, Phoenix, it is late afternoon, mountain time, and it's 116. The 19th consecutive day that Phoenix has had highs in the 100 and teens. Uh, this is a new record. Uh, you know, obviously it's supposed to be hot in the southwest in July, but for 19 consecutive days to be this hot, that's pretty remarkable. And, you know, here's, you can pick out Death Valley where this green shading is. Uh, another day with highs well up into the 120s there. Now, they're just dying for the monsoon season to kick in down here. That typically occurs late in, in July and into August. You get uh, moisture coming in from the south. You get higher dew point air. The air can't get as hot when the dew points are elevated. You also get a scattering of thunderstorms and at the very least some clouds. So we're just waiting for that pattern to start to lock in uh, across parts of Arizona and the desert southwest. Until then, though, the beat goes on. All right, so, you know, over the last couple of months, so we've been keeping an eye on the rainfall trends, certainly locally. Uh, we had a pretty dry stretch in the spring and early summer. We've done better of late. Um, the crops are doing okay. This is the latest uh, crop report from the USDA. And uh, a lot of the crops, a high percentage of the crops are in good or very good condition with a much smaller percentage in the poor category. Hay about 69% complete. So this is for the state of Ohio. Uh, Pennsylvania is in similar shape as Ohio. All right, our Wednesday is a winner. That front kind of washes out. Uh, and even though you know, it's going to be another day like today where maybe there's a speck or two on the radar, especially down towards I-70 in the afternoon. We're going to keep a dry forecast for our Wednesday. This warm front then pushes in by Thursday morning, setting the stage for a pretty soupy day on Thursday. It'll be a more humid day. And this front is a pretty strong one, especially for late July. As this starts to encounter that hot and increasingly humid air mass, I think there's going to be some thunderstorms to get going. Now, we don't have great model agreement on the timing and the coverage of these storms locally. But here's the latest run of, uh, you know, kind of what we call our in-house model. Um, taken literally, it would suggest a pretty active period very late in the afternoon, early in the evening, with thunderstorms blossoming around that time. Now, some of our other high-res modeling waits until later in the evening for much to happen. Some of the modeling is a little bit faster than this. Uh, it may depend a little bit on if we get a complex of thunderstorms down here across maybe the lower Ohio River Valley. If that happens before anything happens farther north, Activity down here might rob some of the juice from potential thunderstorms in central and northern Ohio and western PA, and that would decrease our severe weather chances. But as it stands right now, we have a pretty good chance of seeing at least a scattering of strong to severe thunderstorms late afternoon and evening, even though the details are kind of elusive right now. Um, so stay tuned on that. Everything's out of here by Friday, though, and we've got a very comfortable and nice Friday and weekend 
Forecast. So with their day three outlook today, the Storm Prediction Center actually outlined a good chunk of Ohio in the slight risk, level two out of five, uh, risk of severe weather. All the uh, modes of severe weather are possible. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily a great tornado setup, um, but uh, hail, damaging winds. And even though we're a category lower across eastern Ohio and western PA, uh, you know, I, this is going to be one of those things that, you know, we, we're probably splitting hairs a little bit between the categories until we have a better grasp of the timing and the coverage. Um, it's hard to say whether it's appropriate for us to be in a level one or level two risk. We'll have more confidence, I think, by this time tomorrow evening. I want to show you the uh, excess uh, rain outlook or the flash flood risk coming up on Thursday. So in addition to the hail and wind threat, uh, these storms could be really efficient rain producers. Uh, the atmosphere is going to be really juiced up on Thursday. A lot of moisture, not only down here near the ground, but up several thousand feet. So uh, medium risk of flash flooding in any storms that uh, manage to pull through during the second half of the day on Thursday. So uh, this is the way we have it timed out right now. And again, this is a little bit subject to change, but uh, the initial thoughts today would be this is a little more towards the evening for us. Um, whether it's early in this window or later, again, not real confident of that right now, but these are the main modes of severe weather that will be a possibility. So stay weather aware. Make sure you're uh, keeping up with the latest forecasts on the Storm Tracker 21 app on our newscasts, WFMJ.com, and of course on Wednesday evening's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. What a map in the 6 to 10 day outlook. Uh, July's going to end on a hot note, uh, not just in the southwest and just about all the plains, the Rockies. Even around here, you know, I'm not expecting mid-90s or anything like that, but I think we'll flirt with 90 a couple of times next week, especially middle of next week, say Wednesday, Thursday of next week, so eight or nine days from right now. So this is pretty much a coast-to-coast hot-looking pattern. Um, I don't think it has a lot of staying power locally. I think it gets pretty hot for a few days next week, but then probably reverts back to pretty close to average at the very end of July and the start of August. I still don't see any evidence in the medium-range modeling that we're going to lock into some sort of unusual hot pattern um, for late July and early August, the quote-unquote dog days of summer, if you will. Uh, I don't see any model evidence right now to suggest that uh, all of a sudden we're going to see a big heat wave and a string of 90s and things like that. So that's the way it looks right now. And of course, again, we're going to have you updated on uh, Thursday's situation on Wednesday evening's edition of this same video, same time, same place. This is usually online about 7.15 to 7.30 p.m.